Good morning, everybody. Uh, one of the things we love to do as a family is we love to go on adventures and go and explore uh, places that we've we've not seen, and especially kind of going out in the countryside and being outdoors and just going to going to explore and have a, a walk together as a family. And when the kids were really little, that was still quite easy to do because we could carry them quite a long way on our backs. And uh, and then we, we hit this phase where they were a bit too big and a bit too heavy to carry very far, but they hadn't yet got to the point where they could do much walking for themselves. And that was a, a bit of a frustrating kind of phase to be in because we'd, we'd still want to go and explore and, and have adventures and see see new parts of the countryside, but the uh, the kids would have other ideas. I mean, for a start, they'd want to stop and look at every twig and every leaf and every insect and every puddle and every field and every cloud. And it's amazing that the awe and wonder that they have, but we wanted to see a bit more than that. And, uh, you know, and then, then there's the moments, of course, where, you know, they've just had enough of life, of the day, of whatever, and they just kind of defiantly sit in the middle of the path and refuse to move. And you just know that there's not, you, you know, you're not going any further that day. But now, of course, we've we've, we've entered a, a different phase again. The kids are that little bit older, that little bit um, bigger, and they've got more stamina and loads of energy. They can they can walk um, for, for miles, actually. And so now when we go out on, on our family adventures, it's often the kids who are out in front and they're off kind of exploring to see what's coming up around the next bend. What else are we going to be able to, to discover on our, our, on our adventure that day? And that's a really kind of great um, phase to be in. And then, of course, if you introduce kind of wheels into the mix, you know, you take scooters or bikes with you and suddenly they've got speed as well. And there was one occasion not that long ago where we were away together and we'd gone, uh, gone off on um, kind of it was an old railway um, trail that's that's now a kind of trail for bikes and, and, and walkers and so we'd taken the bikes and we were on foot and what we hadn't really appreciated was that in that scenario with this long straight trail ahead of us the kids were significantly faster than we could um, we could be on foot and so we put these rules in place about, you know, you can go ahead, but, but don't go further than we can see you. You know, make sure you keep checking back over your shoulder, make sure that you can see us. And it all went really well until on the way back when the kids were getting to the point where they just wanted to be back at the car and, and kind of, you know, get, get back for the day. And so they wanted to keep pushing a little bit further and a little bit further to, and and at one point they went so far ahead that we'd completely lost sight of them. We hadn't kind of, each time we went around the bend, we were like, oh, they'll, they'll just be waiting. They'll, they'll just be waiting around the bend. It's all right. And we realised that they weren't. They, they just, at some point, they had just kept going and we needed to, uh, to, to catch up with them. And there's this moment where we just kind of looked at each other and thought, yeah, we, we're going to have to run at this point. So there we were kind of jogging down the trail, hoping to find them around the next bend or the next bend. And clearly they'd still carried on. Uh, we did pass some uh, some other walkers at one point. They're like, it's OK, we've we've seen we've seen them down the way. They're, they're doing all right. But clearly they were still moving. Uh, and, it, you know, at this point we were starting to get a little bit more concerned. And so, um, you know, I passed the passed my coat and, and the backpack and things over to, to Jess so I could properly kind of run down the trail to get them. Now, eventually they had stopped. Eventually they'd got to this point where the freedom of running ahead and the excitement of being ahead and trying to get back to the car on their own had kind of been eclipsed by this realisation that we're on our own in the countryside and we have no idea where our mum and dad might be and that feels a little bit unsafe and a little bit scary and there was this realisation that actually it would be better to be with mum and dad right now so maybe we'll just wait here and, and hope that they can catch us up. Now it was all okay, we, we got to them and we sorted things out and but it was that realisation that actually there's an excitement sometimes of running ahead, an excitement of kind of getting to do our own thing and and a freedom that, that seems to come with that. But ultimately for, for them as our kids, there was also that realisation that they need to be with us, that, that, that there's a safety uh, in that. 
So with that story in mind, I, I read these uh, these words earlier on. This is from from John's second letter. Because um, I'd not noticed this phrase particularly before. Uh, so to John, uh, starting at verse seven, he says, many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take him into your house or welcome him. Anyone who welcomes him shares in his wicked work. It's a difficult passage. It's not one that gets preached on very often, but I hadn't really noticed that that phrase in verse 9. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Anyone who runs ahead. And I wonder whether that's the image that John has in mind as he writes this, this image of, of us being children of our Heavenly Father. Like my kids on the trail, kind of, we have this urge, we, you know, there, there comes a point where we just want to run ahead and do our own thing and, and have that apparent freedom to be, you know, to be in the lead and to be kind of choosing the way to go for ourselves. And that's really exciting and it's, you know, it's good to explore and all of that. But actually, when it comes to our relationship with God, you know, do we do we do the same thing? Do we do we run ahead of Jesus and say, actually, no, I, I want to choose the way to go. I want to do the exploring. I want to, you know, your your way of doing things, God, just seems to be too slow or too frustrating or difficult or I just don't like it very much and I want the freedom to just run off ahead of you and to do my own thing. But then that realisation that when we do that, there'll come that moment, like there was for my kids, there'll come that moment where we look around and realise, do you know what, I'm not quite sure where I am or where I'm supposed to be going and, and I'm a bit stuck and, and I need God to be here right now to put things right again. Actually running ahead might be fun for a while, but there comes a point where we realise again our need for God and our need for, for him to direct our lives. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. You know, Elsewhere the Bible talks about walking in step with the Spirit not rushing ahead, doing our own thing, not lagging behind and resisting what the Spirit is doing, but actually walking step by step through each day with the Spirit of God. Why don't we pray? Father, we're sorry for those times where we, where we have run ahead, where we've chosen... For whatever reason, out of frustration or just wanting our own sense of freedom, our own selfishness. Lord, we're sorry for those times where we have run ahead of you. Would you help us today to walk in step with your spirit? To trust that walking with you at your pace and in your direction is the most fulfilling and exciting adventure that we could be on. In Jesus' name, Amen.